what I am going to show you is a trick that I have learned from a student of mine, a watercolor trick, that I think you guys will kind of find interesting. You can choose to steal this and use it if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's fine too. So with my flat, There we go. With my flat, I'm going to get it damp like I would with a wash, but I'm going to put one color on this corner and another color on that corner, and I'm literally going to kind of have like a Jolly Rancher effect here. So give me one second. Here. Get some water, tap it off, put some red on this corner. So I have red on this corner. And I'm collecting the gold on the opposite corner. Mm-hmm. So this is a fun way to create designs, yeah? But with your hump here, you're going to kind of want to kind of do like a curved line on top with your stripies. So I'm going to do that drag and pull with the body of my camel using a few drops of water on my brush and lots and lots of paint. But I really want that soft brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the drag and pull technique here with the body so I can get that kind of glowy effect. I almost kind of want to make it look like the moonlight is making my um, camel glow. However, I know, I know that I'm not going to have enough paint to make this work the way I want it. So I'm going to spread little polka dots of brown paint all over the camel's body. Now, if you want a blue camel, an orange camel, a green camel, you decide... But you're literally using lots of paint and very little water at this point. And when you're ready, let's do that controlled wash. Grab a flat, get it damp, no paint, and spread. All right, so I have a feeling like I did my camel too dark. I didn't want it to be that dark. So... I'm going to teach you guys a trick on how to fix that. I have a dry cloth here. And I'm going to lift some of that. I'm going to lift it. Get it damp with some water. Lift, 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 lift. <laughs> Don't rub. Just, just tap and lift because if you rub you're gonna rub your paper fibers apart and you might rip your paper so don't don't rub just tap see now he's starting to glow a little bit right make sure if you do this you do it with clean water my water doesn't have a lot of paint in it yet so that's kind of why I wanted to do the I had a feeling I'd go too dark so Lift, lift, lift. I'm going to do the same thing, kind of, with the sand here. I'm not really worrying about my pencil line because I'm going to be putting a really dark color over this pencil line here. And it's going to disappear underneath my black because I'm doing that black sky. But if you're doing a blue sky or something light, feel free to lighten your pencil line so it doesn't interfere with your, your paint. That's get a, a lot of water and a lot of paint here. Yeah, because my I have such like a goldy kind of sand here. I really didn't want my goldy sand to kind of compete with the color of my camel. So I made my camel a little bit darker. I 
I don't know if you guys have metallic paint, like this paint right here, some of my paint has like a metallic shimmer built in. So I kind of use that for my sand to kind of make it all glittery. All right, let's, let's wait for this to dry before I add shadow. Cause it's a little too wet. I'm gonna take the easy way out here, friends. I am, sometimes, sometimes stuff sticks to my oil pastel just a little bit, like if it's chunky. So I'll add the oil pa pastel afterwards, but I'm gonna use oil pastel for my stars. You can do that with crayon. If you do that with crayon, you might wanna put the crayon down first and then put a wash over it. So right now I'm creating a wash using a uh, watered down black paint. And I am spreading strips of this uh, diluted paint across my canvas for my sky. After this dries, I will go in and then I will add my oil pastel stars afterwards because I feel like my yellow or my white oil pastel will pop even more if I layer it on top of my paint. Um, if you have regular crayon, however, it might work, it would work better if you were to put your crayon or your wax crayon down first and then do this wash part. Now to avoid brown from competing with my black or even bleeding black into my brown camel, I'm going to line the edge of my brush up against the edge of my camel's body and I'm going to pull out and away from the camel towards the edge of the paper. Uh, for the area underneath the camel or around the humps, you may need to switch to a smaller brush. Just keep that in mind. Take your time with this process. Uh, my, my sky is going to be pretty dark, so I'm going to have a lot more paint versus water when I'm doing this. Now keep in mind, this could be done with blue paint. Um, you could create a lighter blue by having less paint and a little more water. You could create a darker blue by having more paint and less water, and vice versa. Totally up to you. If you're looking for a sunset, I would advise adding different strips of color into the background like red, yellow, and orange using lots of paint, little water, and then feathering that out with a damp flat. All right, so now that my camel is 100 percent completely dry I am going to add in my mixed media I'm going to use a pen to add in the details of my eyelid and eyelashes I'm gonna do my nose maybe a smile Maybe I want some polka dots on my blanket. I'm doing this all while my watercolor is dry because I'm using a pen that is not uh, waterproof. It's actually a water soluble pen. A lot of the pens around your house are water soluble. So you're gonna have to be super careful with um, the type of pen that you're using. You're going to want to make sure that you, um, ooh, my pen's being naughty. You want to make sure that if you use pen, that you don't mistake it for one that is uh, waterproof when it's water soluble, because if you get water on it, it will explode everywhere. So that's why I just played it safe and did this process last. This is a perfect way to add texture, maybe put some little lines in here to indicate that there's fur. It really helps uh, get those fine details without having to worry about, uh, what do you call it, um, watercolor paint exploding everywhere. So I'm just going to add a shadow here, or little hatches of a shadow. And for the stars, you can um, use oil pastel to kind of get those stars to go 
and pop up against the background. So let me show you how to do that. Now this oil pastel can be done before you apply the paint or after. Um, I'm doing it after because I just think it looks more clear and easier to see. I have a feeling that sometimes I get some of the white of the paper to kind of pop through the oil pastel and then when I put color on top of it sometimes some of that color kind of sneaks into the, the exposed paper fibers so these are my uh, these are my stars in fact I think I think I want them to be I think I want them to be yellow so I'm gonna put yellow over them now I really like how this moon is uh, is super different than uh, my cloud I'm gonna add some shadow to my cloud I love this technique because it really gives you more control. It's super nice. And now my cloud doesn't look like a little white puff in the sky. Maybe I want to add some kind of texture to my pyramids. Really get those babies to stand out. And then maybe Maybe I want to add a face to my moon. Maybe. Totally up to you guys, though. You guys don't have to do all these details. I just think it looks really cute. 